Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to a new session of online physiology and today we will discuss the brain energesia system. A system that is meant primarily for suppression of pain signals arising in different parts of the body. Okay? To be able to understand the brain energesia system, we need to have some understanding of the spinal thalamic tract. Even though we have a dedicated lecture on the spinal thalamic tracts, I give you a brief refresher here just for the sake of convenience. Okay? The spinal thalamic tracts as shown in this part of the diagram transmit the sensations of pain, temperature and crude touch from different parts of the body all the way to the cerebral cortex, to the sensory cortex. Okay? And the receptors for all these sensations are the free nerve endings and they constitute the first order neuron. Okay? The free nerve endings are the first other neurons are stimulated by painful stimuli causing tissue injury and they enter the spinal cord, ascend for a level or two before silencing here on the second order neurons. Okay. Here the past pain, uh, pain fibers terminate primarily in the lamina marginalis, the lamina one of the spinal cord, while those carrying slow, pa slow pain impulses terminate primarily in the lamina two three and five of the spinal cord okay the fast pain fibers thereafter form the second order neurons that cross immediately to the opposite side of the spinal cord and ascend on the contralateral side of the spinal cord forming a bunch of fibers called the spinal thalamic tract okay and the name is self-explanatory because most of the five the second order neurons terminate in the thalamus Okay, and the third order, order neurons then extend from the thalamus to the sensory cortex on the same side. Okay, the slow pain fiber, the second order neurons here in the case of slow pain fibers, the periospinal thalamic tract has a different, bit different course. Here only the second order neurons like the fast pain fibers ascend on the opposite side, on the contralateral side, but only 10 to 25 percent of the fibers terminate here in the thalamus while the remaining fibers project to alternative destinations in the brain. Okay? Some of them terminate or project to the reticular nuclei of the perms, medulla and mesencephalon. Some of them project to the tactile area of the mesencephalon while the, some of them project to the periequiductal area, gray matter surrounding the equiduct of cellulose. Okay, and these alternative destinations have their own implications because most of them constitute the components of the brain energesia system. Well, here we move on to the brain energesia system. Okay, to begin with, pain is a protective response in first place that informs the brain of any ongoing or impending tissue damage so that the brain can devise a solution. And that solution could be in multiple ways. That could be simple withdrawal, that is staying away from a painful stimulus, or it could be activation of the sympathetic nervous system so as to elicit a fight or flight response. At the same time, pain is not, not just unpleasant for the subject, but annoying for the brain itself. Okay? So whenever there is a painful stimulus, a continuous painful stimulus, the brain tends to suppress those pain, uh, those pain impulses at multiple levels, okay? It has a descending pathway to suppress pain impulses and that suppression is done usually at two levels. Either at this level, at the entry point of pain signals from periphery into the spinal cord, or suppression of those signals at still higher level, okay? So here we have a magnified view of the same diagram so that we could discuss those suppression pathways in a bit more detail. Okay? So whenever there is pain, the higher center, the cerebral cortex, the amygdala, the hypothalamus and to some extent the reticular nuclei send signals to the periequiductal gray area to suppress those pain signals. Okay? Now the gray matter here in the periequiductal gray area surrounding the aqueduct of Sylvius sends neurons to nuclei and the reticular formation. We have two such nuclei, the 
we need to get seraphim magnets and the lower pons and upper medulla and we have one more nucleus the nucleus reticularis paragigantocellularis and the lateral part of the medulla okay activation of these areas by the periequidectal gray area causes impulses that descend all the way down into the spinal cord okay and here the neurons arising from the nucleus seraphim magnet and this one with a difficult name descend all the way down to synapse on neurons in the gray matter of spinal cord okay we call dorsal inhibitory complex and these fibers are unique those from the nucleus seraphim magnus secrete serotonin and we have a five dollar word 5 hydroxy treptonine for serotonin okay while those fibers originating in the nucleus reticularis paragigantocellularis secrete norepinephrine at their nerve endings okay here in the spinal cord they synapse on short interneurons and cause them to secrete what we call enkephalin okay we will discuss this in bit more detail but what enkephalin does in return here we have a presynaptic neuron, a first order neuron, a free nerve ending, synapsing on a second order neuron in the spinal cord. Okay? And the stimulation requires the pain signals cause the release of glutamate in substance P by the presynaptic neuron in the synaptic cleft. That causes depolarization of the postsynaptic neuron in the spinal cord. Okay? The enkephalin secreted by the interneuron and the spinal cord blocks the pre causes presynaptic inhibition and postsynaptic inhibition as well and here the mechanism involved is really important here the presynaptic neuron releases glutamate or substance p depending upon the pain fibers involved fast pain fibers secrete glutamate while the slow pain fibers mainly secrete substance p and this release of glutamate or substance p is calcium dependent okay and caffeine binds to its receptors opioid receptors in the presynaptic membrane here and causes the blockage of calcium release in the presynaptic neuron now blockage of calcium release causes the blockage of release of glutamate or substance p so that the postsynaptic neuron cannot be depolarized okay this is how it causes presynaptic inhibition still later it causes postsynaptic inhibition as well here in the postsynaptic neuron it binds again here to its opioid receptors and causes increased potassium conductance thereby making this neuron hyperpolarized that is difficult to excite this is how the Descending pathway causes presynaptic and postsynaptic inhibition so as to block the entry of pain impulses into the spinal cord. Okay, but like every system, this system too doesn't offer absolute protection. Some impulses somehow manage to ascend all the way to the sensory cortex and cause disturbance. Okay, for those escaping signals, we have one more level of protection. And that is the brain brain's opiate system what we know we have opiate like substances morphine and its derivatives widely used in medical practice for suppression of pain okay but we do have the same substances over one dozen of them in the brain endogenously secreted okay and those include encephalines endorphins okay and dynorphines those are few of those types okay like encephalin secretion here in, within the brain stem and spinal cord we have a relative axis of encephalin that will block that will cause suppression of pain signals at this level but not this one okay similarly at the level of hypothalamus and pituitary gland the endor beta endorphin will cause suppression of any pain signal that escapes and reaches those areas so this is the second level of protection well here i just forgot to mention that the brains opiate like substances like encephalines and beta endorphins have multiple modes of action 
they are not just limited to cause presynaptic and postsynaptic inhibition of pain impulses at the level of spinal cord or suppression of pain sig signals at higher level. They have many other added benefits in terms of pain relief. For example, they reduce the emotional impact of pain by acting in the areas of brain like the interior cingulate cortex. At the same time, they increase the dopamine level in the brain. And uh, perhaps you are well aware, dopamine is a marker of euphoria and well-being. Once we have higher dopamine levels, so the pain is not that disturbing. So those opiate-like substances, whether endogenously produced or given exogenously, cause at those levels as well. So the question here is, if the brain has to receive all the sensory pain impulses through the ascending pathways and it has to manage suppression of those pain impulses through a descending pathway either by blocking their entry into the spinal cord or by or through the brain's opiate system what are we doing what is the utility of having so many medics and medications out there okay so we are here to understand this process, explore it, and combine science with nature, okay? The brain has to do all these things, but still, those mechanisms do not offer absolute protection. We, after exploring this process, can offer a helping hand to the brain and to the patient as well to come up with a solution that aids in pain suppression. And in a while, I will get back to you you better master these concepts and I get back to you in a while what we can do, how we can combine science with nature to offer some pain suppression.